In this video, we're gonna be working with Django Models, and Django Models makes it so simple and convenient to interact with a database without knowing SQL language or a database language. We can interact with a database with Python and Python only out of the box. It's really cool stuff. Let me show you how it works. Let me first tell you what kind of data I wanna work with. I want to be able to keep a track of a list of scores. Let's say I'm a teacher and I want to keep a database of my students' test results. So Alex got a 99, Robert got a 74. Let's say I wanna be able to add Janelle got a 89 and Andrea got a uh, 53. You get the idea. We want a name and a score associated with it. I wanna be able to add to that list, take away from that list, modify the list, all that good stuff. So let's do that. Inside your Django project, make sure in your project and you have your virtual environment active. Let's go into our app directory, which we have named score, which is appropriate. Oops, ls, we're gonna go cd score. And in here, there is a file called models.py. So this is where we're gonna define our model, which again is just a representation in Python of what's gonna be in the database. So let's define our score model. So it's gonna be a class called score, and it's gonna be of type models, which we're importing here, dot model, okay? We're just inheriting from model, and it's gonna have two fields, the name and the score. So let's do that, name, and the type of the name is going to be models dot char field, and char here is just short for character, character field, like letters, uh, with a max length of 50. So you can have a name that's between um, zero and 50 letters. The other field we're gonna have is called value. I'm gonna call the, the score itself the value that they got on the test. And that's gonna be of type models.positive small integer field. And as the name kind of implies, it's just a small positive integer, you know, one, two, three, four. We only need to keep track of scores between zero and 100, and that will be sufficient for us. So let's go ahead and save that file now that we have defined what our data is gonna look like, and let's create our database syntax. Now, we don't, again, we don't need to know anything about databases, we just execute a command in Python, Django does it all behind the scenes for us. So. That command is going to be, well, first of all, let's go to our root of our project, and that command's gonna be python manage.py make migrations. Now, a migration is, uh, and I'll actually show you what the migration looks like. It's making this Python file that's gonna communicate with the database in the back end. So let's see what that looks like with python manage.py sql migrate, the name of our app score, and then the name of the migration, which here is 0001. So all this did is looked at our model and it's defining the database syntax for us. So it's gonna create a table and it's gonna have an ID column, which we don't need to worry about at this point. And it's gonna have a name with a variable character field up to 50 characters. And it's gonna have a value field that's a small integer um, greater than or equal to zero. So that's in human readable terms, kind of what we wanted to do, but it was a lot easier to just define that in Python. Now, I mentioned this in a previous video, but we do have a migrations folder inside of our app directory, and that's where that migration lives. Okay, so now that we've defined the migration, let's actually execute that database code in our database, which by the way, out of the box default for Django is in this database.sql light3 file. Okay, that could be anything. I'll just mention this real quick. That could be any database, a Postgres database, a MySQL database, Maria database, any of that stuff. But we're just gonna use the default database out of the box. So let's apply those that database migration to the actual database. Let's execute that code with python manage.py migrate. And this is gonna do a whole heck of a lot of stuff because this is the first time we're doing a migration. So it's going to take care of a lot of backend stuff that we're going to use later on in this tutorial, such as uh, the admin console and the authentication uh, tables that it needs to keep track of users. 
And then you see down here our score migration being applied to the database. All right, we have done enough at this point to be able to start adding data to our database. So let's go ahead and do that. And the way we're gonna do that is with the Python Django shell. So let me show you how to access that. We're gonna type in python manage.py shell. And that brings us to this interactive Python console where we can import different Django packages and test things out and interact with our database. It's a great way to do all that type of testing before you uh, implement things into your website. So let me show you how that works. We have access, like I said, to our Django packages. So in order to import our score object that we just created, we can do that with from score.models import score. So that is basically the path in our, uh, our Django project. So the app directory called score, there's a file in there called models.py. And in that file called models.py, there's a class that we just defined called score. So we're gonna bring that into our Python Django shell here. And now we can see what kind of data we have in there. So we can check that with score.objects.all. And right now there are no scores. We haven't added any scores to um, the database yet, but let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna make a score object in the syntax for instantiating a new object is going to be the name of the class, S-C-O-R-E, and then the parameters that you're gonna pass into that. So the name is going to be Tony, and the value is going to be, uh, let's say I got a 95. So we'll hit enter, and now we have a score object, and we can do things with the score object, like score, what's the name, Tony, what was the score that Tony got, 95. Now this isn't in the database yet. We can save it to the database with something like this, score.save. Hit enter, and now that data has been saved to our database. And we can verify that by pulling down all of our score objects again with score.objects.all. And before we had an empty query set, and now we have a query set with just one object in it. And that makes sense because there's only one row in the database. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more scores to our database just so we have some data to work with. And I'm gonna paste that in here. So I added four more um, scores to our database, Alex, Robert, Andrea, and Janelle. So if we check all of our score objects again, now we have this with one, two, three, four, five objects as expected. Now, there's one modification that I wanna to make to our model and that's how it's printing it out on the console. So we're seeing this kind of ugly syntax, score colon, score object one, score. We don't really know what that score object is until we access it directly. But let me show you how we can give that a better string name. And inside of our um, score directory in our models.py file, we can simply add another function in here that looks something like this. So def underscore underscore str underscore underscore self. And then that's gonna return self.name. Now what the heck, what, what does this mean? Basically, whenever you print out a score object on the command line, it needs to print out a string. And the default string is going to be, at this point, self.name. So self is this object that you're currently working with and then the name field here. So it's gonna just print out self.name, which is the name of the person. So let me show you how that changes things. Back on our Python shell, we can import our score model again, and we will do score.objects.all. And now instead of seeing, you know, that object one, object two, we see the score with the actual name of the, the person who got that score. Okay, that's cool. Let's take it a step further and do some filtering and sorting and show you how to interact with the data in a different way. So let's go ahead and make a new variable called scores and we're just gonna do uh, like we were doing score.objects.all. So now our score.objects.all is stored in this variable called scores and we can loop over that. So for score in scores, let's 
print something out to the console that says um, this person got a this score. And we can format that with the score.name and the score.value. So let me explain this in case you're not familiar with this syntax. Um, this is creating a string. The first argument to the string is going to be the name of the person. And then the second argument is going to be the value of the score for that person. So if we execute that, we should see five lines. Tony got a 95, Alex got a 99, so on and so forth. Now, what if we wanted to print those out in order? Well, we can do that in a very similar way for score in scores dot order by value. Okay, we want to order them by the score that the, the person got. We can print out the same exact stuff. Hit enter. Now, Robert's at the bottom of the top of the list with the smallest score, and Alex is at the top of the, the bottom of the list with the biggest score. Um, if we wanted to do that in the reverse order, we can do order by value descending equals false. And then we'll print them out. Okay, my bad. I really overthought that. We don't need an extra argument here. Django makes it pretty easy. You just have to put a minus sign in front of it to, to kind of negate the order. So for score in scores dot order by minus value, we can print the scores out. And now top score is going to be at the top and bottom score is going to be at the bottom. Perfect. All right, let's do some filtering. Um, let's define a new variable called high scores. And that's going to be score dot objects. And instead of all this time, we'll do filter. And then what's our filter going to look like? Our filter is going to be value. We only want values greater than or equal to 90. OK, what, what is this? So we're applying a filter. And Django has this pretty neat syntax where you can specify a field name here, a double underscore. And then they have all these predefined uh, filter filters that you can use, like GT for greater than, GTE for greater than, equal. LT for less than, LTE for less than equal. And that's going to query the database and only return the records that match that query. So let's see if that works. Let's get only the people with scores higher than 90. And we can do something similar like we did before. So, and just so we can save some time here, for score and high scores dot order by value, we're going to print the same type of thing. This person got this score. Hit enter. And as expected, we only see scores above 90 or equal to 90. Now, another filter that we can do is uh, on a string. So there's a whole bunch of different string filters, too, that you can apply. And again, I'm going to, for, for the sake of brevity, so you don't have to watch me type, I'm going to define this uh, by copying and pasting it. So names that start with A. Okay, so a variable called A names. We're going to do score.objects.filter. Same type of thing, the field name, double underscore, starts with, that's our filter this time, starts with, and then the letter A. So let's see if that works. I'm going to copy and paste the for loop here, hit enter. So now we only see names with A, Alex and Andrea. Interacting with Django models on the command line is great, but an even easier way to interact with them is using the Django admin console, which we'll be talking about in the next video.